Good morning or good afternoon for those of you across the country. I'm real excited to connect with you all today and, and happy fall. I know this is about the uh, second or third time this week alone I've had a conversation with folks who've been really excited to see students coming back to campus. I know that's going to happen for everyone probably in the next couple weeks, but uh, for those of you who already have students, this has always been my favorite time of the year. Uh, and I just love the energy and despite some of the, the parking woes that I hear about quite a bit as well. Uh, but again, real excited to connect with you all today. Appreciate you taking the time to, you know, as I know it can be a very, very hectic time of the year. So without any further ado, uh, today's uh, is all about giving you an update on what we've been up to here at Parker Dewey and also how this tool can be rolled out most effectively for those of you who are planning on relaunching, launching, or otherwise sharing this with some of your students this fall. Uh, as usual, we're going to have lots of ideas, so hopefully some of these will be helpful and always happy to elaborate uh, further and to continue the conversation uh, in the, uh, the, the, the days, weeks, months ahead. Uh, if this can be helpful. Uh, so feel free to uh, keep the questions coming in the chat. And uh, without any further ado, just to give you an idea, this is what we're going to be talking about. So some updates and some just general company-wide news. And then our deep dive, uh, certainly the, the vast majority of our time, is going to be spent all on some tactical implementation ideas for the fall so that you can effectively engage whoever you wish to engage. Uh, with, with some, uh, some new ideas. And we'll give you some specific examples of how uh, some of our different uh, universities and companies and, uh, and diff different, different partners have been rolling out Parker Dewey uh, uh, over the past few months, as well as uh, in the, uh, the months ahead. Now, if any of you are joining us who currently are not an official Parker Dewey partner, uh, feel free to join us next month if you'd like to hear a bit more about how the platform works, how we collaborate with schools. You'll, you'll certainly, uh, and, and other organizations, you'll certainly get some ideas today. But um, if you're looking for more nuts and bolts, that's going to be a, a different conversation uh, outside of, of what uh, we, we're going to have time to talk about here. And again, always happy to connect offline. Uh, we are going to be recording the session. We are going to be sharing the slides and so happy to, uh, to, to continue the conversation. Feel free to share the slides and, and or the recording and other resources that we'll send to you in the next day or so if you need to uh, leave early or if you have some folks who are uh, not able to join us today. So with that, uh, just as we like to do every time we connect on these quarterly updates, just want to share with you the uh, the network of partners continues to grow, uh, both with different organizational partners as well as universities nationwide. So if you are a new partner, welcome. Uh, real excited to have you launch your program if you haven't already uh, in the coming weeks and to support those efforts however we possibly can. Uh, to give you an idea of how things have evolved. Uh, it's been a very busy year and a half, a very challenging year and a half for many folks, uh, but the world of micro internships has certainly um, gotten on a lot of folks' radar over the, uh, the, the past year and a half. So we've seen a significant increase in the number of projects, uh, significant increase in the uh, size of the projects, which that middle statistic uh, illustrates. And uh, one, I think, key takeaway from that middle statistic in particular is the fact that this increase in revenue is illustrating that some of the projects have grown in size. Uh, so that's more money to your students. And so this concept of these short-term projects turning into longer-term ways that uh, companies can connect with students, uh, again, that just yields more opportunities uh, for more students at a time when uh, more certainly uh, helpful and needed for, uh, for many students who are still, still struggling to, to launch their careers. Uh, and we continue to see new companies that have posted micro internships. That 400 number, that is new companies. So uh, certainly not uh, counting the, the, the uh, thousands that have already used this pre-pandemic, but um, you know, we continue to see just more and more uh, of how this concept is, is getting on more folks' radar. 
Uh, and so just a few other just updates and changes. Uh, we rolled out a new payroll system for those micro interns. So this uh, it just makes it uh, process a little bit more streamlined. Uh, so if you are uh, working with students, they would receive the exact same email that you see on the screen on the left side uh, that tells them how to sign up for uh, the, the platform for processing payments or terms of service, et cetera. Uh, also mentions for international students that they need to connect with uh, the International Student Services Office to confirm their eligibility to participate in micro-internships. Uh, so those, those uh, guidelines have, have not changed, just a little bit of a, a process shift, uh, just so that you all are aware. Uh, and then when students are selected, they receive uh, these resources or access to some of these resources, like what you see on the right side. Uh, and so certainly if you're interested in checking out what your students receive, Again, once they're selected for a micro internship, feel free uh, to take a look at some of these. And if you have thoughts, ideas, questions, uh, suggestions, we're more than happy to, uh, to, to hear and receive any and all feedback. But hopefully these are resources that are going to be useful. Uh, we already have seen that in the, uh, the past several months since we've launched some of these additional resources. We also are about to launch a LinkedIn group that is exclusively available for career launchers. So students and uh, recent grads who are interested in these opportunities. Uh, we're doing this based on feedback from students uh, that we, 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 we launched a survey back at uh, the, uh, the end of the academic year, asking them if they would want to connect with each other and if so, how they'd want to do that. And so LinkedIn was by far the, the biggest uh, request. And so we're going to be populating this group with opportunities for students to uh, hear from previous micro interns, hear from companies who've hired students uh, on the platform, various other career content specific to micro internships in the job search in general. Uh, and it will be an invitation for any and all students and recent grads who have that career launcher account uh, to participate in these. Uh, we'll also be hosting uh, at different events where they can live chat with uh, either staff from Parker Dooley and or companies that are uh, participating in, in micro interns so they can hear that perspective. Uh, so again, lots of different uh, ideas and, and uh, uh, different ways, this, this uh, way to connect students to each other uh, and to these opportunities. Uh, and so we're excited about this, this development. Uh, it should be launching uh, within the next couple of weeks. And so we'll be sending out the invitation in the September Career Launcher newsletter. Uh, if you don't receive that newsletter, uh, if you hadn't heard about it before, uh, this comes out monthly to all students and recent grads who have an account on the platform. You're more than welcome to uh, opt into receiving that if you wish as well. And the link to do so uh, will be sent out to you via the, uh, the slide deck. A few other updates as well. You may have seen this in our uh, newsletter that we sent out uh, about a month or so ago, uh, but we did another destination survey of the students who participated in micro internships during that topsy-turvy 2019 to 2020 academic year and found that uh, a lot of things stayed the same, especially in terms of who are participating, the students that are participating in these micro internships, uh, significantly uh, female, significantly uh, underrepresented um, populations uh, based on, on race, LGBT, LGBTQ. Uh, and so uh, again, this, those that data around who is uh, in these opportunities are, uh, are, are benefiting uh, has not changed, which is something that we're always uh, very excited to see and has been consistent. Uh, from day one at Parker Dewey. Uh, but we also have uh, found that these opportunities continue even in a challenging economic uh, time that, that 2020 was, uh, that they continue, those students who complete these micro internships are more likely to be employed, significantly more likely compared to the uh, even the most recent uh, 2019 data that really didn't have that uh, pandemic influence yet. Um, 2020 NACE data isn't available yet, but uh, you know again, it's, uh, it's been a, a turbulent time and we're just excited to continue to see that these opportunities are benefiting those who are taking advantage of them. So all that being said, I, you know, a couple other findings that just want to share with you all uh, from this survey. So the fact that students are more confident, particularly being able to work remotely and independently, since that's usually what they're doing with micro internships. And uh, then, you know, 82% also reported that pay 
was really important, um, that they value the opportunity to be compensated. Um, and they can see some of that was directly reflected in, in a few of the quotes that we, uh, we, that we received. So they really enjoy that first quote, for instance, the short-term project uh, element, the fact that they can get real experience and also receive pay uh, in a tight job market uh, was, was particularly beneficial. Um, and you know, a few other testimonials directly from students who participated in the survey. Uh, you can check out the full report if you're interested, but hopefully this does illustrate for you the value of even these short-term uh, opportunities uh, that we, we continue to see. But now we're gonna just turn our attention uh, and the rest of our time to focusing on just some tactical ideas. So how can you get your program ready for the fall? Um, as, you, as we go through this, if you have questions, I've got the chat up and running, please feel free to just send whatever questions, thoughts, and et cetera, um, my way and we'll, we'll address those uh, as close to real time as possible. But essentially we have four different steps to help you with your program and a ton of resources embedded uh, throughout the deck as you'll, you're about to see. So first and foremost, uh, check out your landing page or landing pages as you're about to see. Second is to make sure that your staff, your team, uh, whether they're working with students or they're working with companies, that they know about this as a resource and some of the different value propositions that these short-term micro-internships uh, can provide and perhaps more importantly, how they're different from the other resources that you already are providing for your students. We've always said since day one that micro internships are not designed to replace anything that you're already doing, such as working, you know, suggesting to students, hey, uh, you should come to our career fair or to employers, hey, you should hire our students for internships and full-time jobs but rather that they can add additional value, particularly for those students where uh, they're not able to come to some of your events or for those employers that uh, just don't have the needs for or have a hard time getting on students' radar when recruiting for internships or full-time roles. And again, we'll talk about that in just a moment, as well as how you can best strategically reach out to students and or companies. And we're gonna focus just on companies, uh, particularly for today's conversation. Um, and you'll see lots of different program examples and spotlights as we work through this as well. So step one, uh, you may have seen this already, but your landing page has a new look. And this has uh, been a, a transition that we've been working through uh, over the past uh, several months. So again, you may have already seen this, but we did a, a pretty significant redesign of all of the uh, standard landing pages for all of our partners uh, based on feedback that we received from uh, individuals to make them more accessible, particularly if they're using a screen reader. They said that those tabs that in this example on the left that say for career launchers, for prospective employers, et cetera, that those were just not as easy to pick up with the screen reader. And so with that feedback, we redesigned everything. And so it's more accessible, more mobile friendly. We've also done a few design changes where uh, students are less likely to sign up as companies. It's a little bit clearer call to action, uh, particularly in that tops most section. Uh, and so with these changes, your page now has some stock photos. So the, the pictures on the right side of the, uh, the two individuals, uh, that's a stock photo. And unless you provided us with different images, that's what your page has. And so there's at least three of those images in most cases. If you wanna swap them out though, feel free, send some extra pictures uh, my way and we'll get those swapped out for you. Um, and also while you're at it, if there's other changes that you'd like to make, as you can see from some of these different examples, a lot of schools choose to change the name of their program. Uh, so micro internships could be changed to something else, uh, depending on what makes the most sense to your school or your students. And same thing if you have specialized populations of students that you're working with, international students, undocumented students, et cetera. Uh, we have a bunch of different examples of language that you can feel free to use if you'd like. Uh, and you can also customize it however you wish so that your page is as effective as possible at sharing these opportunities with whatever populations that you're most interested in sharing them with. Um, so again, happy to send you specific examples if helpful, but feel free to let me know if uh, any of these changes, uh, if you'd like to make any of those. They're real fast changes on our end. And then specifically as well, if you're interested in reaching out to alumni and or employers, what we hear is the biggest question that 
schools or organizations, and certainly what we get from, from the, our business development team is, okay, this sounds interesting, but what are some projects that students could do? And how much should they charge for them? And, and you know, things like that. And rather than you having to field yet another litany of questions when your staff is probably already pretty stretched with other things you have going on with this year, send them back to us, uh, those, those questions, and we can help facilitate that by building out a page like what you see here. And so these pages can say whatever you like up at the top on that left side uh, that, again, we have standard language like what you see with this Marshall University page, but uh, we can customize it however you'd like. Same thing with the list of projects that are on the right side. Those are one-click projects. So if you were to click on website updates, information about that project is pre-populated, includes the description, the number of hours, the dollar value, et cetera. Any and all of that can be changed but it does give folks a helpful starting point. And uh, so again, if this would be helpful, there's no cost to it. Uh, our, our ultimate goal with any of these partnerships is that it, it's just as that word implies, it's a partnership. And we wanna do our part to help support your program however we possibly can. And as part of this, uh, if having a page like this would be helpful, um, more than happy to do, it, to, to do it for you. Which leads me to step two, sharing this with your team. And so one of the most common questions that I hear uh, regularly from uh, different partners, whether it be educating a new contact that we're now working with, or just folks that you know, missed some part of, of uh, some of our initial conversations, uh, is, is listed here on the slide. So the fact that this platform is open to all students all graduates, so those of you who are working with your alumni and still providing career services to them, whether it's six months after they graduate, a year after they graduate, a hundred years after they graduate, if these opportunities would be helpful to them, send them this way. They certainly can. They don't have to sign up with the .edu email address. There is no single sign-on. And the reason for these things is to, to make them accessible to all of you. If you're not a current partner, you certainly can still send your students. Your students already have access. They may have already found us via a Google search or just the, the typical resourcefulness of students. It doesn't take a whole lot of time to create a profile, as you can see with those screenshots on the right side. And so I would encourage you, those of you who are planning on sharing these opportunities with your uh, with students, uh, tell your team they're more than welcome to create an account themselves. And if they do, that encourage them to add your school or if you work for one of our nonprofit organization partners, add that uh, an organization to the affiliation section of your profile. Doing that will open up more opportunities, will help you to see all of the different micro internships that are currently available to your students uh, at, at any given time. Without having that education section filled out or for again, nonprofits to uh, adding that uh, organization in the affiliation section, your students are not necessarily going to be able to see all of the projects that are currently available to them. And then while you're at it, when advising students, when working with them on one-on-one, -on -one, feel free to of course, show them the platform. You can pull up your own account, or if they already have an account and you're wanting to help them, coach them, make sure that uh, their profile is as strong as possible during an advising appointment, have them log into their profile, see what their profile looks like, see if it's complete, see if they've uploaded a resume and what version of their resume that they've uploaded. If they've applied to projects, have them log in so that they can see what their application responses look like. Uh, you might find that they could add a few more details, be a little bit more specific about their project, uh, how they answered the short answer questions, uh, or maybe they need to work more carefully at editing their project example or their responses and so on. So that you're aware, this is what it looks like from the student's perspective. Uh, and you hopefully know this already, but uh, they, do have the option for companies to say that they only want projects visible to certain schools or organizations. And so uh, that will be listed in that featured projects section, like what you see at that left side screenshot. If a project's open to everybody, as most are, uh, then they'll immediately see that all open micro internships list. And that's again, those projects that are open to everybody. Also know when you click on the project, the amount that is listed under payment, that is what the student will be paid upon completion 
of the project. They have to complete the project first, but that $360 is the example uh, illustrates for that particular micro internship. That's what they'll be paid. There's no surprises for the student. Uh, you know, that's what, what they would receive via whatever uh, a bank or accounting method that they've chosen when they uh, completed their, their paperwork uh, with Parker Dewey. And then lastly, as far as applying for a project, having a profile is great, but we are not a resume database. So just that's another important point to know when you're advising students in that the only companies, uh, excuse me, the only students that companies will see are those students who have applied for that company's project. And so they have to answer at least one short answer question. And the one you see on the slide is the one that all students uh, will have to answer when they're applying for micro internships. Companies can add additional questions, but they'll definitely have to answer that one. A few other just nuts and bolts about navigating the platform in case you weren't aware. Uh, so they can always check out the projects under opportunities as the ones that are currently available. But after they've applied, they can also see the projects uh, that they've already applied to. And if they're still under consideration, the project will be listed under applied. And so um, that's something just to help you, to help your students so that they know where they stand. After the company has made their decision, if they've selected your student, your student will receive an email and then that project will shift under the and, and now appear under the hired section until the project's completed. If the student was not selected for the project, then it will no longer be listed under the applied section. So just so you know, that's how they can check out uh, where they stand. Uh, so a couple of the questions that have come through, is there a way to have access to a sample or test account? So if students have questions, yeah, great question. And I strongly encourage you, go ahead and create your own. Uh, it's because we are not a resume database, by you having an account, uh, whether it be for your office as a whole or just for you as an individual, that doesn't give a company any sort of ability to see you whatsoever. So feel free if you wanna just create one just for you as an individual or just a general you know, test dummy or whatever sort of account, whatever you'd wanna call it, uh, just for your, your team, feel free to do so. Same thing with companies. Uh, if you wanted to have that perspective of, of how it looks from the company's perspective, uh, just make sure you use separate email addresses and you're good to go and you can, can certainly uh, check out and see what's available. Just as I said before, make sure that you list your school in the education section so that you can see those opportunities that are specifically for your institution uh, in case there are projects that are just exclusively for your students. Other question that came through, is there a way for students to search using keywords? instead of having to scroll through a huge list. It's a really, really fantastic question. And they can always certainly use whatever browsers, you know, command or control F to, to use a keyword search. However, we deliberately don't have a lot of filters for students. And the reason for that is to encourage career exploration. However, we always have a relatively short list of projects, uh, meaning there's always around 50 to 100 at any given time. Uh, there might be more if there's a bunch of projects that are featured for your students. Uh, we see that with, with a number of our partners right now. Um, and yeah, they can still use keywords to search you know, marketing or social media or IT or you know whatever they want. But the reason we don't have a filter for major or a filter for industry or things like that is because we find that if we did, students would miss out on opportunities such as that example we see from the DeBruce Foundation on the left side, a statistical analysis project that probably would be relevant to students from a wide variety of majors, but the department is under data research. So you could see a student maybe in IT could find that to be useful, any business student, marketing student, or anyone in liberal arts that just has a real passion for or interest in numbers. And so if we did have a filter for, for that, uh, you know, then a lot of students might miss out just because they perhaps weren't necessarily thinking of a stats project uh, being, you know, something that, that was up their alley. So I hope that's helpful to you, to Jamie, and, and uh, certainly happy to elaborate and clarify if needed. One other piece to recognize and keep in mind is that whether you use Handshake, Simplicity, or any of the other platforms, every school that we work with has a partnership or has, you know, has one of those job boards already for full-time jobs for internships. And you know, I, when I went to school, we had those platforms as well. I didn't have Handshake because I'm old, but uh, you know, those existed. And when I think about how I used those platforms, 
it's very different than how we see students use Procure Daily. So I know for me, and I'm sure for many, many of your students, when I was looking for full-time jobs and internships, I was on those platforms, whatever it was back then, I was on there daily, seeing what was available uh, maybe several times a day, uh, looking at opportunities, applying and so on. But then once I had my job and my internship uh, and I had accepted and all that, I ignored that platform. There was no reason for me to be there anymore. However, with Parker Dewey, that's not the case. We're seeing that students continue to use these opportunities even after they've been selected for uh, projects and really at all stages of their academic journey, freshmen through alumni. So, and you're thinking about what students this might be a fit for, one way to approach this is just to think about who may not be a fit for Handshake yet because they are maybe too busy training for their sport and they just don't have time to come to your career fair or they you know, just, don't, just don't have a lot of a, a free time in the day. Uh, first generation students that just may not even know about the process of how you secure jobs and internships, but they still need experience in order to help launch their career just like every student does. Maybe there's students that have GPAs that are just a bit below the typical cutoffs. Uh, one of the key things that we don't have on the employer side of our platform is we do not have a filter for GPA. And we don't have that deliberately. We hear from companies that they constantly are having to increase the GPA so they can whittle down the number of applicants for, uh, and, you know, there's lots of great students that are left behind. Uh, they may even be in some of the first two categories, student athletes or first gen or just any student that just is juggling a lot, maybe struggled with the first few uh, you know, semesters in college and their GPA may not have caught up with what their abilities are. Uh, and so you know, those students are, are oftentimes left behind when uh, and, and being able to stand out for some of those more competitive opportunities. Whereas with micro internships, companies tend to be a little bit more willing to try a student who is just maybe not outside or who is just outside of what they normally would recruit for. Uh, maybe their major is a bit different than again what they would normally recruit for or target. They go to a different school than the normal focal schools that the company normally recruits at, their GPAs, et cetera. And so you know, that's something just, just to keep in mind. It's a different strategy in how companies are approaching micro internships, as you'll hear a little bit more about in a moment. And also know that projects are filled really, really quickly as a general rule. So the behaviors of students, they log in daily, they apply to lots of projects, again, even after they've secured these opportunities. And so you know, with the example that you see on that right side of those three students, they were, uh, you know, in a couple of cases, alumni as well. Uh, we had them on a webinar uh, back uh, about six months or so ago now, and their insights were really, really interesting. Um, so Adila, for instance, that the first student, uh, she was a student athlete and was really having a hard time fitting in uh, the job search with training for her sport. She was a basketball player, ended up playing professionally for a bit. And then after that career ended, she used micro internships as a way to segue into and ended up receiving a long-term full-time role uh, through the micro internship that, uh, you know, that she secured. Uh, Legend, he's a, a current student. Um, actually, I believe he just graduated. Um, but anyway, he was a student that uh, his GPA just, just didn't reflect his, uh, his capabilities. And so um, he's done a bunch of projects and has done a lot of different things in a lot of different fields and has been able to leverage those experiences um, to build on top of, of each other to, to be able to end up uh, in, in some interesting uh, longer term roles as well. Um, and then Yashin, the, uh, the UC Berkeley student, her story is that uh, she already had a full-time job lined up, and, but it wasn't going to start until about six months after she graduated. And so she decided to do micro internships in that six month period of time, knowing she was gonna head to, I believe it was Deloitte uh, for her full-time job, but still wanting to build her skills, build her network, and gain a little extra money as well. And so that's how she continued to, uh, to leverage these opportunities. Uh, so I just wanted to share those, those examples, because again, just different behaviors of, of how students approach this. Um, and keeping in mind that all of these opportunities are paid, so they're all you know, make more accessible for those students. They don't have that opportunity cost of if I do a micro internship, then I wouldn't be able to do a, a 
job elsewhere, but no, they, they still are paid for their time. And usually this can be done in addition to whatever else they might already have going on, classes, work, et cetera. A few other examples of some other students. Uh, so Kenzie, uh, she completed a project while studying abroad and was able to leverage that into a longer term month to month contract doing various marketing uh, programs and things for the, the company that she did the project for. Uh, I guess he dabbled in a lot of different things. He's a liberal arts major studying e economics and has done a bunch of different projects um, and continues to, uh, to leverage these, these uh, micro internships just to figure out from a career exploration standpoint what uh, is the best fit for him and where he wants to take his career. Um, and then Yera, uh, so she proceeded uh, in doing micro internships uh, about two years ago, and uh, when she was pursuing her, her master's degree, um, and then now has been able to complete uh, micro internships, uh, excuse me, to bring micro internships to her company, uh, even though she's also now working on her doctorate. Uh, but she was hired full time uh, for the organization that, that she was working for. So again, different examples. We've got a bunch of case studies and you can check those out on our website. We profile these to the students in their student newsletter. We've also been profiling these in our monthly newsletter as well, just so you can get a sense of who are these students that are being successful in the platform. And the key commonality with all of these students is persistence. They don't just log in once, apply to one project and then call it a day. They are on the platform every day or two, leveraging those, uh, you know, what their experiences are, being able to share with and showcase what they can do. Uh, in the case of Gus, he's sharing that uh, he's got a, a variety of different skills. Um, in the case of Kenzie, she was connected thanks to a faculty member uh, with uh, one of her marketing classes. Uh, so again, everyone's story is a little bit different, but uh, they're you know, still able to, uh, to leverage these experiences despite other things going on uh, in their lives. And then also I just share with you a few examples of application responses uh, that uh, have worked. So this particular students completed six projects in four months, and then you can check it out later on if you like. And then uh, the students done eight projects uh, in over a three month period. And so again, persistence and being able to show enthusiasm for the project, highlighting some examples, uh, whether it be from other micro internships, internship experiences, uh, class examples, et cetera, uh, that showcase that uh, she has a strong interest or fit uh, for the role. Now, those of you who uh, work with employers, or if you want to share this with your colleagues that do, uh, just a couple of notes as well uh, is that you know the companies they have a lot of flexibility when they are posting these projects. Uh, there's no cost to post; they don't have to post a minimum number of hours. It could be just a one-hour project. Um, you know, most are between 10 and 40 hours, but uh, it doesn't have to be that. It can be longer, it can be shorter. The company specifies all of that, and we vet each project individually to make sure that the pay is reasonable. Uh, the typical range you can see on the slide is $15 to $20 an hour, but there's a bit of a variability uh, based mostly on the skills that are needed. So, for example, projects in the IT or accounting are oftentimes uh, compensated at a higher rate than that. Uh, the location of the organization can also play a role. So we have uh, you know, where the minimum wage is uh, is lower than oftentimes the pay range for that particular micro internship is lower. Um, but again, all projects are fixed fee as well. So students don't submit timesheets. Nobody's tracking their hours or their time. And uh, at the end of the project, the student is paid the amount that's listed on the project, whether it takes that student 20 hours to do a, uh, the 20 hour project or 19 hours, 21 hours or, or whatever. And this just encourages students to focus on the project itself. And uh, you know, if they're excited about that project and not so much on, oh, I spent 15 minutes doing this and 20 minutes doing this and two hours doing this. One other big differentiator as well is that the students are not on the company's book. So we handle all the payroll admin and all of that. We assume the risk and they can post these projects just for your students, as you can see on that right side. But that's a big differentiator from a company standpoint between us and Handshake Simplicity or your other platforms, uh, because companies have to figure all of that payroll and admin uh, side of things themselves if they're gonna pay students using some of those other platforms. And so particularly for smaller companies, but even for larger ones where they just, you know, it's a lot to, to handle, uh, especially for larger organizations uh, to, to tackle you know, having somebody hired on for a shorter term project. And so this makes the, that option more feasible for them. 
And again, I'll share with you some examples of, of uh, companies that are uh, using this uh, you know, in just a little bit. And so again, you can check if, if a page like this is helpful. We're more than happy to, uh, to build that out for you. We'll also notify you when these projects are posted by companies who either found us for your landing page and or if they featured a project just for your students, we'll let you know that as well as soon as those, those projects are available and approved. So let us know uh, if, if any of these resources are helpful. We're happy to build them out for you. Which leads me to step three. So how and what are the best and most effective ways to reach out to your students? And the first question I would ask you is which students or which students are you trying to reach out to? All of them, which is certainly the most common way that, that uh, most of our, our university partners have approached this. Or are you looking at certain cohorts of students? And I cited an example from University of Central Florida who had a massive increase in student signups because they chose a specific cohort model. So it's focusing uh, just on students in certain majors or student athletes or whatever. In their case, they did about four different pilot programs with various cohorts in order to, uh, to launch their program. And uh, so again, those are uh, just some approaches that are completely up to you, but I wanted to share that as an example. A uh, question that just came through, what are the typical projects and who are some example companies? So great question. Uh, as far as typical projects, uh, kind of looking through some of these featured projects give you a, a little bit of an insight. Uh, that was discussed in greater detail in, in the, uh, the kind of more nuts and bolts webinar. Um, as far as example companies, stay tuned. And I'll give you some specific examples of companies who have actively uh, promoted and uh, posted micro internships right now. Uh, so just stay tuned, Valerie, we'll, we'll get there in just a moment. Uh, another thought when it comes to thinking about student outreach is when. So at the start of the academic year tends to be the most popular approach. Uh, it's a lot of different ways to frame it. You can say, hey, this is a great way to gain experience so that you can be more competitive, you can complete projects, so that you know some of the companies that are launching large scale micro internship programs are choosing to do so at the start of the academic year. So those of you who are looking at trying to leverage these opportunities early on in the fall, that's a really good time. Uh, from what we're seeing from the business development team as that companies have deliberately held off on posting projects because they wanna make sure that students are excited and are on campus and are hearing about these opportunities. And so again, it's a really large uh, logical time for you to be sharing these uh, in the next month or so. And um, particularly as before you're telling them about your career fairs or saying, hey, mark your calendar for career fairs. Oh, and by the way, here's some ways you can get a paid experience right now. This also might be helpful if you are finding that employer engagement is mixed or, or down, or this is gonna be a wacky year, it seems, uh, at least the fall uh, term with the Delta variant and so on. So depending on what's going on on your campus, this could be an alternative way to engage employers and or students, uh, despite what else is going on in the world that's outside of any of our control. Uh, particularly as well for those freshmen and sophomores who may not be ready yet for that internship, but this could be a way for them to get in, gain some experience. Um, and then, of course, after the career fairs are over, you can use this as a, a continued engagement tool for them. Uh, it's a good reason they, to, to say, hey, you attended our career fairs. Here's some other ways that you can still gain experience, uh, you know, and so on. Uh, and then uh, all throughout the term. So we've got email uh, examples that we've pre uh, prepared for you that you can use all throughout fall term and we'll have another one for the spring as well uh, when the, when the time comes. How do you reach out to them? Well, lots of approaches and I'm sure you're probably already doing a lot of these things anyway for any and all of your different uh, resources and, and events. Uh, so of course email and again we'll share with you some of these examples of emails. Uh, we also uh, social media collateral that you can download and, and with any of these pieces of collateral, you can edit them however you'd like, but at least you're not starting from scratch. We can design a handout for you if, if you want to have a flyer to post on a bulletin board or what have you. Uh, presentations, we can send you a slide deck or you can create one from scratch, add a blurb in your newsletter, your website, and so on. Uh, another question though, how do we do a keyword search for specific industries? So uh, it's gonna depend on whatever browser that you're using when you're looking at the opportunities, but uh, you know, control F or command F, uh, usually is is uh, the, the 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 search or the 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 uh, code that'll that'll work to to at least do a keyword search uh, to get you started. 
a few other ideas as well. So listing them on your website uh, under career resource and tools and resources, adding it as a job posting under Handshake Simplicity, again, whatever platform you're using, that'll lead to Parker Dewey's landing page. Uh, that's a great way to just keep visibility up all throughout uh, the year for all the students who are, are just solely using those platforms. Uh, and then, of course, listing them on your website and you can see examples uh, from, from various schools. I've, I've given you brand ices just as an example, uh, or within whatever Blackboard, D2L, or your LMS that you're using. Um, recommend highlighting student success stories and, uh, and then adding them to presentations. Uh, and you can see, uh, I mentioned Gus earlier, well, he's uh, been a frequent guest speaker at FIU during some of those internship presentations to share his experience uh, as a micro intern. Um, and that's been a really effective way for FIU uh, and uh, the, uh, the students there to, to hear straight from the source about these opportunities. Um, and again, we're happy to send you a slide deck. We're happy to host a session for your students as well. Uh, whenever, just let us know uh, some dates and times and we'll, uh, we'll get you set it into the calendar. Um, and then just some, some last examples here, sharing with faculty. We find, uh, particularly with some of the smaller schools that have really, really highly engaged faculty, uh, those that teach the capstone classes, or they just really seem to just understand the value of career services. Uh, those are your faculty that will probably really, really love this model. Um, when looking at the, the registration list for today's call, some of you are on the call already as our primary point of contact at, at some of our partner schools. And uh, you know, so the, you, the faculty have such a unique relationship with students. Um, the students trust their opinion and they can be a fantastic way for students to not miss out on opportunities that are just right there waiting for them. And then lastly, companies. And this will go back to uh, your, your question, Valerie, around who are some examples of companies that are using micro internships. Uh, what we're seeing is that companies, as I shared with some of the data earlier in the conversation, they're really starting to understand where micro internships can fit into their larger recruitment strategy, uh, particularly in the areas of building brand awareness early on so that freshman or sophomore or those first year graduate students and so on, um, and then protect, connecting to students that they're otherwise missing uh, for a variety of reasons, whatever, whatever the, the, the case may be. Um, so I shared with you a couple of different quotes from companies. And again, you can elaborate and read, read a little bit more on those later on if you'd like. But this also aligns with what we're hearing from students as well. This is hot off the press. We literally just got this data yesterday, uh, which is a, a, a reissuing of our student-wide survey asking students how they want to be recruited. And we'll have more uh, of a deeper dive into this data um, in the, uh, the, the next edition of our monthly newsletter. Uh, but again, just to give you an early snapshot, uh, what was by and large, you know, what these students want, they want paid internships or paid micro internships. And I think that the word paid there is obviously really important uh, and a key uh, identifier. And there were a bunch of other options, but uh, that, you know, that's really what students are looking for. They want to get experience, ideally paid experience. And can't say I'm, I'm surprised by any of that. What I thought was also particularly insightful was when asked about how to secure a job after graduation, there was still a lot of uncertainty for students uh, with trying to understand themselves, what roles they would be good for, how to apply for a project or jobs, uh, companies, what to expect, all of those sorts of things. And you know, there's a lot of different uh, ways that students can be taught that. Uh, and I know there's a ton of programming that, that you and your offices are already doing to give them some insights. Let micro internships be on the list as well, because what we're seeing from companies is that they are finding that skills based hiring, being able to assess in advance that a student can be and can and, and does a good job with whatever the work or project is, is a great way to make sure that the student is the right fit, uh, as well as being able to truly assess that the student can be successful in the role. The other things that we heard from students, so that uh, they, they really love this concept as a way to help decide if they're a good fit for the role. Uh, they said that it helps them to understand and gain some experience uh, so that they can uh, make sure that they're more competitive, give them some day-to-day -day insight. Um, and then the student, the, the bottom quote was uh, an interesting one that stood out to, to me, especially because uh, their perspective was that the, uh, the events oftentimes were just just very passively telling a student about, this is what the company's about, this is what, the, but not as relevant for the student, 
uh, because a student wanted to know a little bit more about the what is it like to work there and not so much what a, you know, the perspective is, but just give me some real projects. Uh, give me some, some ideas of, of actually seeing what it's like rather than just telling me. Uh, so again, hopefully some of these ideas and, and thoughts from students are helpful uh, as uh, we all try to dig into what is uh, going to be the long-term takeaways from this past year and a half of, of significant challenges uh, in, in this space. We're going to uh, the question earlier about who are some example companies. Let me just give you a few case studies. Uh, so TRAIN, uh, we actually did a, a presentation with our contact at TRAIN, uh, both for NACE and then a, a rehash of that uh, conversation of, about a week or so ago. And there's is a lot about brand awareness. You hear TRAIN and a lot of students will immediately think of air conditioners or locomotives and you know, they're doing a lot more than, than just that. And trying to get on students' radar, particularly at some of their target schools, uh, doing brand ambassador uh, things as well as for some of their uh, graduate programs that they recruit for. They've been posting projects uh, specifically in those areas, at least thus far. Uh, whereas Xylem, which is a multi-billion dollar water company that uh, does a lot of uh, water purification uh, and environmental um, types of, of projects, particularly in third world countries. And they are really trying to focus on diversity and recruiting students that just don't know what Xylem is. And I'll be honest, I had no idea until uh, we started working with them a few months ago. Uh, obviously not a, a household name. And, and so just trying to get on students' radar uh, with some really interesting and exciting opportunities. Uh, and then Fleet Corps, so their story is uh, that there was an alumnus who started posting projects, uh, but was disappointed because st students from his alma mater weren't applying. And that's because the students didn't know about these opportunities. And so this alum brought micro internships to his college campus. Uh, and now due to the success of hiring both those students as well as students from uh, other schools, this has been a, a way that he's been able to show some, uh, some great uh, ingenuity uh, throughout his company and so that it is now used uh, across a variety of different departments across the organization. A couple of other examples. So Northrop Grumman, uh, they are, have uh, launched their program specifically targeting uh, schools and students who are part of the Capital uh, Collab uh, program, which is a, a DC-based uh, consortium of schools and companies that are really trying to help with uh, building more tech uh, talent within the greater DC area. And I think North of Grumman probably immediately think, okay, those are going to be sensitive projects, uh, but they were able to identify projects where the students don't need to have access to sensitive data or any secure computer system. They can do these on their own time and so on. Um, and that's been a really uh, interesting collaboration and, and just use case to show that yes, students uh, can and, and these, these companies can benefit from the, the uh, students, even if a lot of the work that they are doing uh, is oftentimes rather sensitive. Um, they also are posting projects that are iterative, meaning that they'll hire a student for one project and then they may work with the uh, same student or choose different students for uh, multiple phases of the same type of project, uh, which again, interesting use case for uh, something that might turn into more of a flexible internship all throughout the year, as opposed to just being something that would occur during the summer. And then last example uh, is a company called Corning. So big uh, material science organization that uh, is focusing just on a specific school and specifically uh, the MBA program students uh, at the University of Notre Dame. They have a uh, partnership there already um, and they're trying to get on students' radar as early as possible in the academic year. And so they've posted their projects already uh, with the intention of hiring students in their first couple of days on campus and you know, hopefully giving them some early experience and introduction to what this company is all about uh, and then early, early in their academic journey uh, in their MBA program. So I share some of these examples just to help you get some ideas as you're thinking strategically with companies that you're already working with that are trying to find creative ways to build their brand on campus, to connect with students that they may already be missing, 
these are just some examples. As you can see, micro internships fit into a wide variety of use cases. Uh, and so you know, hopefully some of these thoughts are, are, uh, are helpful. Uh, and then one last example, uh, one that uh, we're, we're excited to be launching literally this uh, last week and, and with students in, in the uh, next week uh, is through HubSpot, uh, which is a, a a CRM platform that uh, is launching a program. So they, they have educational partners uh, all who teach uh, how students can use HubSpot uh, at schools across the country, over 500 different faculty members are from different colleges and uh, universities are uh, part of this program teaching HubSpot to students. Wide variety of, of colleges, universities, nationwide, public, private, HBCUs, HSI, just the, the full gamut of uh, higher education institutions. But what they are doing, HubSpot, is that companies who use HubSpot as their CRM platform have the opportunity to post a micro internship. And as long as that project, if they select a student who's also taking HubSpot as part of their classes, then HubSpot will reimburse them for a, uh, a portion of that micro internship. And so great opportunity for students to get that hands-on experience to put into practice and get paid for uh, experience that they're learning right in their classes. How they're gonna hear about this is in class, uh, but then we're also going to be reaching out to students who have uh, taken these classes both currently and as well as in the past uh, to sh share a, a webinars overview uh, for them. Uh, this is gonna be mostly marketing and digital media courses, but I want to share this with all of you as just an interesting way. Some of you might have uh, HubSpot classes, might be some of those educational partner schools, uh, and you may just be able to uh, share this with your students. If you see HubSpot on their resume, they may uh, be a perfect fit for some of these different opportunities. Uh, but this is also a really interesting use case if you work with companies that are trying or that are, that are teaching their platform or their what you know their their operating system on your campus. This is a, an interesting example of a way that those companies can connect with students early on, uh, can help build some additional relationships with their uh, employer partners, uh, as well as bringing opportunities uh, to those students. So it's an interesting model and, and partnership uh, that I definitely wanted to share with you. Uh, so in terms of employer engagement, we've had a lot of ideas. Uh, put it on your website if you haven't already. There are a couple of examples from the University of Florida and again from Marshall. Uh, send information about micro internships to those employers in your database uh, with the, the value add that can be completed year round on demand. You can put it in to communications about your, uh, and with your career fair, or you can do it before or after. It's a really great way to continue that engagement all throughout the year. This is also a great way to engage some of those small business community partners uh, that, uh, that, that, you know, their chamber of commerce, the entrepreneurship center, et cetera. Um, and so just to give you a couple of examples of those, uh, so you can highlight some key employer sponsors on your page. If you have some specific employers that are uh, doing a lot of micro internships for your students, this is another way that uh, you know, we can elaborate a little bit more about this. Um, we have in previous webinars with the, where it's a revenue generating sponsorship opportunity. Um, and you can see a little bit more about uh, how this has helped organizations like WAVE generate new sponsorship rev uh, revenue, as well as being able to both retain and obtain uh, sponsors that, uh, that they've lost over the past uh, year or so. And uh, then we also have the example of Howard University, who just launched their employer outreach program less than a month ago and have already seen a massive uh, uptake from companies creating accounts, posting projects. In less than three weeks, there's dozens of projects exclusively available for Howard students all through this campaign that was, in their case, uh, just an email and uh, you know, nothing else. So it really, it depends on the school, uh, what we see, but uh, you know, again, in their campaign, they have a nice flyer that they uh, built out on the right side. And then the uh, language that they used uh, was largely uh, based on, on uh, just ideas and suggestions that, uh, that we sent to them. Uh, so, you know, but they've been really, really uh, successful at engaging these different employers. Um, they haven't started doing the uh, student outreach yet, so uh, we're, we're excited to, to see how, how that goes uh, in the next uh, week or two when students get back on campus. Keep in mind too, micro internships work for companies 
of all sizes. Uh, we're seeing a variety of different use cases with entrepreneurship centers. We're hosting a webinar, for example, for uh, the Knoxville Entrepreneur Center, thanks to the University of Tennessee. Uh, and then just uh, last week, uh, a conversation with the University of Montana, who operates a, uh, it's called the Rural Institute for Inclusive Communities. Um, and they are posting projects for some of their uh, institute organizations, uh, specifically just for University of Montana students. These are just one-off projects, but they're trying to increase both diversity of students that want, or the, of folks who want to work at the Rural Institute, uh, as well as for uh, being able to uh, help with just those one-off projects that they have coming up all, all the time. Um, so it's just, again, lots of use cases. Um, one last one I'll, I'll share. This was a conversation again uh, last week where one of the uh, universities that, that I spoke to said they have some extra grant funding uh, that uh, they were going to use to host an event or a speaker, but then they thought, you know, why not pay our students? Uh, and so they're now uh, exploring the, the possibility of funding micro internships uh, for their students at a nonprofit or with alumni. Uh, and we had a bunch of different examples of that in case that's helpful, I shared a few programs. Uh, so another use case, and again, happy to support your uh, you know, brainstorm, how this could fit and uh, how, how this um, might be a uh, you know, possible use case to benefit your students. And one of the biggest examples that we have now is uh, with Swarthmore. There's is specifically for alumni who is uh, providing the projects. The funding is coming from Career Services. And these projects are exclusively available for uh, Swarthmore students and recent grads. Um, and it's just been a, a massively successful way for Swarthmore not only to connect and engage alumni, but also to keep those students uh, and mentoring and building those relationships with with alumni and they don't have to worry about any of the admin or, or overhead because we're handling that uh, on their behalf. So a lot of ideas, a lot of, of uh, <laughs> just, just thoughts and I hope at least some of these are useful for you as you think through. I'm gonna just share with you some of these uh, next steps, uh, suggested ideas. Um, so hopefully, again, happy to, to support uh, any, some, all, whatever of these ideas that resonate with you. Um, just please stay in touch, but you know, in the meantime, uh, check out that landing page, make sure it's good to go, share this with your team, uh, make sure you have uh, some sort of plan for sharing these opportunities with students, ideally sooner than later, just because there's going to be opportunities that are being posted uh, in these early weeks of the semester as these companies launch their programs uh, this, this fall. Uh, and then for those companies that, you know, looking for alternative creative ways, that plan B, uh, that uh, if, if Delta throws some more curveballs our way, which who knows uh, what our future variants, uh, that this, this is just some additional ways that your companies can still connect with your students and, and generate opportunities. So please you know, let me know how and if uh, we can help in any way. Uh, always uh, appreciate uh, the, the opportunity to connect in real time. Um, and above all, really appreciate your continued interest and support of our partnership. And um, sincerely wish you all all the best. Uh, please uh, let me know how and if we can help. So take care.